guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on this practice painting for oil painting. I am really excited about learning more about this new medium, but specifically what I want to talk about today is how I like to go about learning something new, practicing, how I format an image for practice. Just basically a lot of things that go into when you're learning a new medium or practicing anything really. A lot of these tips are helpful for both, but I will be talking about that, about how exactly I try to break a new subject down. That way I can handle it and it makes sense. And I feel like I have these very achievable checklist goals rather than it feeling like this huge, expansive space of knowledge that I'll never really be able to combat. And I find that that's really the hard thing is when you're starting something new, it can feel like there's just so much information and so many things that you don't understand yet. You don't even know where to begin or where to start. And of course, I, I do highly recommend if you have the opportunity to be able to take a class that you do, I definitely learn best in a class environment, but this is some tips for when you're learning on your own, figuring things out, practicing. So let's just go ahead and jump right in with some of those tips I have. Okay, so one of the first things I like to do is just figure out what's something that I'm really excited about being able to paint with this new technique or this new medium or with new skills. And usually it comes down to people for me. I really love being able to draw new characters and paint them. So that's what I focus on today. I wanted to figure out how to blend and shade a face in a way that I could really get the most out of oil paints in a way that I don't have that kind of control in other mediums like watercolor, or that kind of blend that I wanted to get. So I'm able to identify some of those really specific things that oil paints can do that others can't, that I'm excited about and that can apply to the type of art that I love doing and I'm really excited about painting more of. So like I said, that can be applied to pretty much anything. If you're interested in learning watercolors and you want to figure out how to get really luminous, deep colors with having glazing effects and creating really rich layering. That's something that you can achieve with watercolor really well. So being able to figure that thing out that watercolor can do in a kind of subject matter that you're really interested in really helps, at least it helps me feel really motivated to learn it better and to dive in and want to figure it out. Of course, there are always benefits to like going back to the basics and just doing regular still life studies and figuring things out that way. And of course I do recommend that, but I find that what really helps me sink my teeth into learning something new is applying it into something that I'm really passionate with already. So specifically for this piece, I took that advice. I sketched out a face and this is actually the second attempt at painting this face. I sketched it out and I painted her with more natural human skin colors first. And I was at the end of it and I was looking at it I'm like, well, I don't know if it's good enough. But then it hit me really is that ultimately this is just about practice. The more that I do something, the better I'll get at it. So I took that same sketch that way I could just get right into the real thing that I wanted to practice, which is painting. And then I just painted it again with different colors and slightly different shadow orientation. And I was able to get even more practice out of it. So I think that's also really helpful is just to remember that that it's okay to move on and do something again and multiple times. And I definitely realize that I, I get this mentality where I try to get one thing right and done. And then if it's good enough, then I move on and I refocus on something else. And it's, it's a, I think a different mindset to remember that practice is practice and practice needs to happen a lot before things really start to sink in and you get better at it. So repetition, I think is probably my next tip is just make sure that you keep attacking the same things. Even if it feels like you've already, you've already done it. It's old news. You've already figured out how to draw an eye, or you've already figured out how to shade a specific shape on a specific face. The more that you do it, the more you'll understand it and the more you'll be able to master it. And probably my biggest tip is to use reference. Reference is your friend. It is so helpful to be able to make much quicker progress in your artwork and learn the skills specifically that you want to learn. I just, I can't even express how much of a difference using reference consistently with every piece that I do, how much difference that has made in the quality of the work that I've done. 
and really focusing down on what you're trying to practice, what you're trying to learn and figure out what is the best kind of reference you can use for that really does go a long way. So for this piece, for learning how to do oil painting and shading the face like this, I had actually several references that I was looking at during and before working on this piece. So the first probably obvious one is I had a good clear photo of shadow on the face that had a very similar face shape to the face that I had sketched out already. I actually, I think I mentioned earlier, the first try that I had at practicing this drawing that I already had, I used a slightly different reference for the way that the shadows hit the face, but I found another reference that had very similar face structure and different shadows, the way that they interacted with her face. And I wanted to be able to try it in a slightly different way. So I did make sure that I had a very clear photo that is so important. I mean, when it comes down to it, you are not gonna get better until you really study what it actually looks like. And for me, for shadows on the face, that is something that I actually have been really lax on as far as studying actually how it looks. I've been really relying on just understanding basic form shapes and where shadows might fall, but not really studying more subtle shifts in the way that the planes of the face shift. So, so that was my big key thing is have good light and shadow references for this face. And one of the key things that I do when I'm using reference is I take time before I start painting or I start drawing or whatever I'm trying to focus on. And I just look at the reference. This is something that I learned back in school when I took my figure drawing classes. Before we'd even start drawing, we had a set timer of just looking at the model and studying how the anatomy flows and where were, where were their plumb lines, where were there things that we really needed to take note of. And that actually has really changed the way that I think about references now, because it gives me time to just look at it and understand it and focus on things that normally when I'm just in the moment of drawing, I have a habit of just going back to what I think it looks like or what I've seen once and drawn once and it kind of sticks to your head and being able to just sit there and look at it and study it and make note of, okay, the nose is shaped like this or, this shadow shape is shaped like this. Whatever you're focusing on your practice, that helps so much. Just be able to look at it, not try to draw it, not try to interpret it, just look at it and study it. And the other type of reference that I use when I'm working on my practice is actual other artists work that mimic some of the techniques that I want to learn or demonstrate drawing the same thing with the same medium. It's really helpful to be able to see how other artists interpret things or how they portray a certain technique that you're trying to learn. So like with watercolors, if you're trying to get these really rich glazes, studying other artists that do that and see how they actually create that is helpful for you to figure out how to do it yourself. Or if you're drawing a nose with a pencil, it's actually really helpful to be able to see how other artists have interpreted that as well. Now. This definitely comes with a grain of salt. You wanna be sure that you're not leaning too heavily on studying how another artist is doing something because ultimately they are looking at the actual reference and then seeing it through their own filter as an artist. And then if you look at it too closely from their point of view, you're looking at it through two different filters rather than your own filter. So it is very helpful to see different takes, different approaches but ultimately you do wanna make sure that you're not relying too heavily on someone else's interpretation. But, but yeah, this is one of those tips that really depends on what exactly you're trying to learn. If you're trying to learn a more artistic expressive technique, then this can be a lot more helpful. If you're trying to learn the anatomy of the nose, then you probably want to go a little bit more on the path of your actual photo reference. For me, I was studying a lot of classical beautiful oil paintings, but seeing how they actually rendered the face and the nose. And that was very helpful because I could see certain areas they spent a lot more time rendering and blending and getting it to look as highly detailed. And then other areas they're letting it be a little bit more expressive and letting certain brush strokes so th show through. And while I'm still really new to oil paints, I haven't quite exactly figured out what I want my style to be when I'm working with oils. So it was really helpful to see how these other masters in oil paintings, how they interpreted it, how they let certain details 
show through or be more obscured. So being able to study different takes like that, it helped me to see what the potential is with the medium that I'm using, with the thing that I'm practicing. And I think one of the most crucial elements to my practice is actually something that happens at the very end after I'm all done with it. And that's where I take stock of everything that I really struggled with and the things that after I'm done with it and I look at it, I can see these weaknesses that are still showing through that I didn't notice while I was still working on it. And I can take note of things that I think that I really got a better grasp on. And it's really important, honestly, to write it down and remember it because it's a lot more helpful for me to be able to come back to another practice session and look at that list and say, okay, I really struggled with, with value allocation. I didn't get those quite right in this piece, which honestly, I don't think I did in this piece. And that way on the next one, I can make sure that I'm focusing on that specific thing so that each session that you have, that you're focusing on something new or even each final piece that you're finishing, you can focus on those things. And each time you'll get better at that thing and you'll be able to add new things to the list or add new things to the things that you feel like you've really achieved and figured out. And that is it for today. I do have a link down in the description that'll take you over to my art shop, which is where you can go get some originals or art prints or other art goodies. I also have a link to my Patreon that'll help support this channel and all the artwork that I do. And I have a link to all of the tools that I use to create this painting down in the description. But that is it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will be back Wednesdays and Saturdays with another video right here on YouTube. So I'll see you then.